Hello, my name is San Juana Delgado, and for my digital poster, I decided to talk about Homo erectus, um, how it was discovered, how it, you know, was in, introduced to us, what their diets consisted of, how their bodies share similarities to modern humans today, and just overall the big picture. So let's get right into it. So first I wanna get into the discovery and the naming. So Homo erectus was discovered in the 19th century by Eugene Du Bois. According to Boyd and Silk 2018, Eugene Du Bois was you know, the founder of Homo erectus and he was actually the one to name it. So he named it Homo erectus erect man. He found the remains in Solo River in Java, which is what we know today as Indonesia. So when they dated these remains, they came back to be 1.6 to 1.8 million years old. So that number right there, that shows a great significance that these animals were roaming way back then, way back then. And I just wanted to see, you know, the similarities, the differences that these, the species shares with modern humans today that they were doing back then, or if, you know, we acquired anything from their mentality, their practices. So let's, you know, that brings me into my next slide. So I want to talk about their skull and just overall their body structure. So to begin with their skull, I included a chart there that compares, you know, the evolution of Homo erectus to Homo sapiens, which is modern humans today. And to me, the skulls and cran the cranium just looks very, very similar with a few minor differences. But to me, I mean, you see the shape, you see the size. It's a, a little bit smaller, but overall, you know, it's around the same size. The only difference I would point out, they had a more predominant, a more, you know, noticeable, stronger jawline. They had a, that the very prominent brow bone that modern humans don't have today. but they had the prominent jawline because of their diet. I would I will get into this into my next slide, but they would bite into bigger prey like zebras, um, buffaloes. They would use their mouth and just bite into it. So they over over time they developed these stronger jawlines. Um, they had very similar body structures to modern humans today. I mean, they had the long torso shorter legs and this was only because they would still um they would walk but they would spend most of their time hanging on the trees they had those very long arms um here you can see that their arms are almost you know like coming down to their to their middle thigh to the middle of the thigh so that just you know shows differences to modern humans um, but like I said, they spent most of their time in trees, so they were constantly hanging, moving from branch to branch. But they do possess a lot of modern human body structures. I mean, they have, you know, the 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 hips there, you know, can be wide, narrow. Um, they had the torso, everything. And this this remains was actually from a young boy. And they are kept in Lake Turkana in Kenya. But I mean, if you were to show, if you were to ask me, like, who do you think this is? I would just say, I don't know, a human, like a modern human, because we look just like them. And to me, that's just very interesting how, you know, the species has been along, around for a long time and we still share a big, big chunk of similarities. And to me, that was just very interesting to see and to read. Um, and like I was talking about their stronger jawlines, and this was mainly because of their diets. Let's get right into that. So since they were really big, they were, you know, they were like what humans are today. I believe they were like from four, eight feet to like six, six, two um, so they were pretty big. So, you know, if you're big like that, you need to eat something well that is going to energize you that will have a lot of protein. And so what they would do, they would hunt big. They would go for zebras, buffalo. 
but then they would also go for something more healthy, like carrots, vegetables, stuff like that. Um, when they would hunt, they would actually bite into these animals. Um, they did have tools, but, you know, th that's just how they hunted. They would bite into them. Um, their life expectancy did range from around 30 years old. And to me, that was very surprising because they lived in a time with very little resources, little to nothing, actually, little to nothing and, you know, diseases out in the world. And for them to live 30 years and, you know, possibly more, that was just very, very, like, shocking to me. Um, to get into how they hunted these animals as well, they would use these toolkits. They would make um, hammers, knives, scrapers, choppers out of stone or rock, and they would use these to hunt their prey. And I thought that was just very, very clever and just very smart of them, very, um, how can I say, very advanced, very, very advanced. You know, they would create these tools that you can see on the far right corner. They would sharpen these tools out of rocks or stones. And to me, it was just like, they are so much older than us, but we still think like them or they think like us, you know, vice versa. To me, that was just very, very fascinating to, to read that we have actually adopted that from them. We have always had that instinct to, to create, to create from the tools that the earth has given us. And that's what Homo erectus did. They created tools out of what they had from the little, little resources that they had, rock, stones, they did this. Um, I just want to wrap this up by, you know, talking about the significance and, you know, just the similarities, um, how these remains have got us certain answers and where they lie. So I just want to go back and, you know, talk about the similarities. I mean, the body structure, the head, um, the way they would use their tools, the way they would actually think. We see a lot of us in them. I mean, we've used tools to hunt our prey. We've come a long way from that now. We, you know, we have guns and all this other stuff, but we started off with sharp tools like knives, bow and arrows. And I believe we we adopted that mentality from Homo erectus. Um, we see the same body structures that they had. Um, and from this young boy here, his remains have gotten us a lot of answers, a lot and a lot. There's still, you know, a couple missing remains. And if we ever do get them, and when we do, I believe that we will continue to get more answers how they lived, um, how they lived and what type of and, you know, what type of environment. They are predominantly found in East Africa, but, you know, I believe that the remains, the missing ones can answer a lot more questions about their environment, their diets, um, how they mated, all of that stuff. But yeah, I just want to wrap it up with my um, bibliography, you know, I did quote the book, How Humans Evolved by Boyd and Silk in 2018. This is the eighth edition. Um, I just want to say thank you for listening to my, um, to my talk about Homo erectus for my digital poster. Thank you so much.